Hi, thanks for joining. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be connecting external data into SharePoint 2010. So I'm not actually going to be using the um, secure store. I'm going to be using just the business connectivity service. And we're going to do it from start to finish. So um, I'm going to create a new database. We're going to populate information into that database. And then we're going to create a security group, an active directory that will manage our, our, uh, our uh, users that will be accessing this database. Okay, so let's just get started. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go into our AD and we're going to create a new group. And this group will be the users that will have access to this, this external database. Okay, so I just click on... Here, I'm going to create a new group here. It's called external database users. Doesn't really matter, anything simple. Okay, so now I have an external database user group. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add myself, of course. And I'll add someone else as well. Okay, so we created a group and we've just added a couple of users into that group. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to run over to the database and we're just going to create a brand new external database or just a brand new database that's completely separate of SharePoint right now, real quick. And then from there, we're going to connect that information through um, the external content type functionality within SharePoint. So let's just create a new database real quick. And this is, we're just going to use like maybe employee information real quick, like just as an example. So I guess we'll just call it, just use income. Okay, and then from there, just going to click OK. So our new database has been created. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a real quick table. Just simple stuff, just to get the point across. So employee name. And I guess we'll use a bar char. money and then I guess we'll add employees wages doesn't really matter okay I'm gonna save this okay so great we now have a table and what we're going to do is we're just going to populate it with a couple of in, with a bit of information. So we'll just populate this table here. And no, this isn't my real income. I wish it was though. And let's say I don't know what ninety nine. What is it? Eighty dollars an hour? No, I'm pretty sure it's more than that. So I'm just going to close that. Okay, so pretty much we have our database here. And we can create views if we want as well. Um, for this purpose, we don't really need to create a view at this point. And so our database has been created. Okay, so we can close out of here. Actually, while we're in here, what we'll do is the security logins, we need to add that AD group that we created a couple of minutes ago. And we're going to add it to the logins here. So let's just run back to the Active Director AD here. I'm just going to minimize that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this group to 
um, the login security for the for the database here. Okay, so this is the group, and I'm just gonna add security role. I'm gonna add a sysadmin. If we don't add that, the group won't be able to access the database that we just created. Um, I know a lot of database experts might be getting upset at me because I might be elevating the access, access a bit too much. If anyone wants to contact me and let me know if I can use a le lesser permission, um, that'd be great. I just haven't had time to really look at all the different types of permissions. But essentially it's this, just this one group and we're just elevating that permissions to allow other users access to this database. The admi but administratively we're going to be administrating the users from the group within AD. So, shouldn't be too, too bad, hope not. So, um, what we've done is we've done everything that we, we need to do in SQL. And um, now what we need to do is we need to go into Designer. And we're going to create our external content type to access the database that we just created. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Designer here. Okay, and I'm going to go to my site collection here. And then in Designer, there's a new option or um, an object called External Content Types. So we click on that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on Create New External Content Type. Got to give it a name. So I'll call it Employee Income. And we're going to leave all these settings the same. Um, just a generic list. Here are all the other options that we have. We're just going to leave it as a generic list. And then we have an option to allow for offline sync to the external list. And we'll just leave that as enabled. And pretty much this is where the magic happens. We're going to be connecting to our external system via this option right here. So we're going to click on it. And then now what we need to do is we need to add that database that we created as a connection to this external content type. So we're going to click on Add. It's going to ask us what type of source. We're going to choose SQL. Click OK. And then here we need to go into Database. And we need to just get some information from the database. So I'm going to get the server name for my database. And then I'm going to get the database name that we just created, which is Employee Database Income. Okay, and we can give it a extra name, it's optional. And like I said, I'm not going to be using the secure store, I'm just going to be using the business connectivity service. Um, if I was using the, connect, the secure store, what I would use is I'd probably use connect with impersonated Windows identity, and then I'd specify the secure store ID that I created. Um, I'll do that in a different video. This one, I'm just showing how to connect to external data. Um, without using the secure store. Okay, so I'm just going to click OK here. It's going to do some checks. Everything checks out so far. So now what I've done is I've added my connection to the external content type. But now what we need to do is we need to specify exactly what type of operations we want our end users to do when they can actually when they actually connect to this um, external content type. So we have our table that we created. We right click and then what we're going to do is we're just going to do create all operations. We have a bunch of other options we can use, um, but I'm just going to create all operations so our end users can pretty much add, update, and remove things just as, as they would any other list within SharePoint. Okay, so here, just telling us what type of operations we're going to be setting up. Click next. These are all of our, our columns that we have. Just giving us some warnings. We gotta have something. We gotta have at least one map, one unique identifier. I'm gonna click that off, and we're gonna show that in the picker. And pretty much, I'm gonna leave leave everything as default. And I'm gonna click next. And this is just an option to allow us to create a filter, just in case um, we have a whole list of information, like a large, large list. List at least there's some sort of um, filter to limit the operation type. So I'm not going to do that at this time. I'm just going to click finish. 
and pretty much that's it so we've just created an external content type uh, via SharePoint Designer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just save it and then that's going to push it up to the business data connectivity services within SharePoint 2010 so I'm just going to click save and wait for a couple of minutes everything looks good so now we have our external content type created and it's now referenced back to our business connectivity services so now what we need to do is we need to run over to central admin do that right now and then I'm gonna go to the business data connectivity services and here it is and now I'm gonna see my external content type that I just created um, so what we got to do is it may not already be set but you might need to go in here and set the permissions for your particular group so if you recall we created a group called external database users so now what we're going to do is we're going to tell the external content type to allow this group to access this external content type essentially okay so we add it and then we have a bunch of options here I'm just going to select everything so everyone that has access to that group can do whatever they need to do with that external content type or that to that database and I'm going to click OK. Okay, so pretty much that that's the hardest part. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run into our SharePoint, our SharePoint team site, and then we're going to pretty much create our external content type from here. Okay, so right now I'm logged in as Kira who is one of the users that have access to the group that we created within AD. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to all site actions and I'm going to click on create, click on external, external list and then I'm just going to call my, give my new external list a name. Okay, and then from here, you're going to see a new, um, an option called external content type. And from here, this is where I choose my external content type that I just created within SharePoint Designer. Okay, so I click OK, and I click Create, and pretty much that's it. So now this is my external data that I that I created in in um, SQL a couple of minutes ago, and now I have it available within SharePoint and I can access it because I created that group, granted that group um, administrative rights or permissions into AD and I've also added Kira to the Active Directory group within AD. Okay, so Kira can look at all this information. Again, this all, all this information is, is, um, is generated outside of SharePoint and Kira can actually go in, create new information, she needs to so let's call let's just add more information here okay and then we save that and as you can see the information gets saved just like as if it was a regular list within SharePoint so if we run back to our database and we look at it directly from here we're going to see that update that Kira made within SharePoint. So pretty much that's that's pretty much how you connect external information into SharePoint. Um, what I'll do is I'll log in as someone else just to show you that it's not like it's fairly secure. Um, I'll log in as another user. Actually, sorry, before I do that, let me just add this user. I'm just gonna add a new user just to show you that. Um, if, it, if they're not in that group, they won't be able to access that external data. Just going to add a user that I know that's not in that group. Okay, and then we're going to log in as JLL. Okay, so now we're logged in as JLL. So because Jill is not part of that group, she's not going to be able to see the, um, the list that was created. At least she shouldn't see it. We hope. Cross her fingers. 
So we're logged in as Kira. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a, we're going to try to check out this list now. Okay, so see, so it's saying that it's saying it's saying access denied because of the business connect, business data connectivity, and that's simply because Kira is not in the Active Directory group that we've allowed to grant access to this external list. So what we can do is just quickly run back to our external, our AD group, and let's add Kira or Jayla, sorry, into that group. Okay, so Jill has been added to that group now. And we may have to refresh them. Look at that, pretty quick. So once we added Jill to the group, she now has access to view the same information. She can access or update the information as well. The, the light went out. So real quickly, um, Kira Jayla just uh, updated the information and I'm just going to refresh here again and now you can see the information that Kira updated. And pretty much that's how you access information from SharePoint you, from an external list within SharePoint. Hope you found it interesting and uh, thanks for listening. Bye.